Okay, this is for the uh, for the for the 29th of October, um, Micro One, and uh, I'm Dr. Morton, which you probably know. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna uh, what I'm gonna cover today is the sleep lab for Friday, and I still have a little bit more to do to uh, to get it all spiffed up, but I'm gonna demonstrate it. I have at least I have it working just like I want it. And then I th with a, just a little bit of uh, fine-tuning of the guidance sheets. What I'm probably going to do is is give you most of the code because um, I want you to kind of see how it runs. And and it's a, it's not that difficult, it, but there's some details to it. So we'll go through some things. What we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to look at the, uh, the, the watchdog timer and sleep functions. And uh, so... There's a couple of things you really should do that would really help you. So let me talk about that first. So if we pull up the data sheet, um, and if I can shrink myself down a little bit, uh, maybe I'll just go away here. We'll shrink this down and maybe even go just a little bit further. Okay. So so if we, um, yeah, something like that. It's not too bad. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right. So, okay. So. So a couple of things. So first off, if you look at the data sheet for the PIC 16F1829, or the LF, um, the difference between the LF and the F is that the LF does run on less power, uh, but it only can go, it can't go to 5 volts. Uh, it has a maximum voltage it can go to. Um, and you can see this. But if you're really going for a uh, um, a, uh, a super you know, low power device, then you'd probably want to use the low, the LF. So the F can run from 1.8 volts to 5.5, but the LF can run from 1.8 to 3.6, but it definitely, uh, it definitely requires less power. So if, if you want to save some power, the LF is the way to go if you can, if you're okay with not running more than 3.6 volts. Um, Okay, so anyway, that's one of the main differences between them. Uh, what I want you to pay attention to is uh, is is the uh, is the the two modules. One is called power down, and the other is watchdog timer, and they're they're nine and ten. So let's just look at power down. So first off, uh, the sleep module is not too extensive. You've got one page here to read, and then there's some timing diagrams and a list of the registers. So there's really not even two full pages. Uh, you can kind of look at the timing diagram, but that's not super critical unless you're just really trying to just uh, get an idea of just exactly how fast these things will wake up. But there are some things that are good to know. One of them is that uh, one of the registers that, that we look at is the interrupt uh, is the status register right here. And let's see, we're on page 97, so we'll come back here in a second. So if we go to the status register right here, remember the status register has the upper three bits not implemented, and then it has these two bits plus the status bits, Z, the digit carry, or the half carry, and the carry bit. Remember the half carry is when you uh, overflow the lower four bits to the upper four bits. Um, but the TO bit is the timeout bit, and it is a one after a power up or a clear, watch time, dot, clear watchdog timer instruction or a sleep instruction. And then uh, on the power down bit, uh, it's uh, it's zero when you execute the sleep instruction. Uh, so um, and then then when you uh, when you uh, first turn it on, or you have a watchdog timer, clear watchdog timer instruction, then it, then it'll be set to one. So these bits are somewhat helpful to figure out what's going on when you come in and out of sleep whether you had a, an actual reset uh, or whether you uh, or whether you woke up from sleep. Uh, and there are other ways you can, other things you can look at too. So just two pages so you can, so you can read it. But let's just read through a little bit of this. Uh, oh, so that's status. Um, what did I see? 91? Well, never mind. We'll just go here. So the power down mode is entered by executing a sleep instruction. When you enter the sleep mode, the following conditions exist. The watchdog timer will be cleared, but keeps running if it's enabled for sleep operation. We'll look at that in a minute. 
the power down bit of the status register is cleared. The TO bit of the status register is set. The CPU clock is disabled, but the 31 kilohertz low frequency internal oscillator is unaffected and continues to operate and any peripherals that are being driven by that clock will continue to, uh, to operate. Okay, and then the timer one oscillator will also continue. Uh, uh, so it, it can continue to work too. Um, the analog to digital converter is unaffected if its built-in dedicated FRC clock has been selected. And the capacitive sensing oscillator will also continue to operate. So you so you can have touch sensing that 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 may be able to continue to work depending on how you set it up, even in sleep. The, uh, the I.O. ports will hold the status that they had, whether they were set high, set low, or whatever. Um, and, but other resets besides the watch, watchdog timer are not affected by sleep mode. All right, and then some steps you should take if you want to minimize current consumption in sleep so the I.O. pin should not be left floating. So they should be, if they're set to, um, if they're set to inputs, then you ought to have external pull-ups on them or external pull-downs. And it, it says that here in a minute. Uh, you, if you have external circuit that's syncing current from I.O. pins or internal circuitry that's sourcing, sur sourcing current from I.O. pins, this is going to add to your power drain and any current draw from pins with internal weak pull-ups. So if you're, uh, uh, so if you have the internal weak pull-ups turned on, uh, you could you could have a little bit of uh, power being drawn by those pins. And then uh, any module using the 31 kilohertz low low frequency internal oscillator uh, will continue to run and draw power and modules using the timer, timer one oscillator will continue. So remember you should you should always uh, you should always pull these the any of these uh, IO pins that are that have high impedance inputs you should pull them high or low to minimize uh, any switching currents that are caused by these floating inputs. And there are some internal circuits that could be sourcing or sinking current such as the the, the digital to analog converter are the fixed voltage reference modules. They could be providing external voltage. When you wake up from sleep, there's several things that can wake it up. One of them is a reset, a brownout, or a power on reset. The watchdog timer, if it's enabled, can wake you up from sleep. And then any external interrupt can also wake up from sleep. And then interrupts that are driven by peripheral modules assuming that the module is able to run during sleep, can also uh, generate interrupts. So the first three actually generate a reset, but the last three just uh, are a continuation of your program. So you'll leave sleep and you will resume execution on, for the instruction immediately after the sleep instruction. So when the sleep instruction is executed, the next instruction, the program counter plus one, is prefetched. If the device wakes up for an interrupt event, the corresponding interrupt enable bit must be enabled. The wake up will occur regardless of the global interrupt enable bit. If the GIE is disabled, then the device will just, it'll wake up from the interrupt, but it won't execute an interrupt routine. It'll just continue execution from the instruction after the sleep. On the other hand, if the global interrupt enable bit is enabled, then the device will execute the the, the very next instruction after the sleep instruction, and then it, after that one instruction, it will enter the interrupt service routine. So I'll show you where we'll actually see that occur. Um, we'll see that occur in our program. And if for some reason you, you don't want the next instruction executed, you can always follow the sleep instruction with a no operation instruction. The watchdog timer is cleared when the device wakes up from sleep, regardless of the source of the wake up. And then when the when global interrupts are disabled, which means the GIE bits cleared, but 
the interrupt enable bit for that interrupt source is enabled and the interrupt flag bit is set, one of the following will occur. If the interrupt occurs before the execution of a sleep instruction, then the sleep instruction won't be executed. It, it'll just execute as a no-op. But if the watchdog timer and, and, the, and the, the watchdog timer and the watchdog timer will not be cleared, the TO bit of the status register won't be set, and the, and the power down bit will not be cleared. If the interrupt occurs during or after the execution of a sleep instruction, the sleep instruction will be completely executed. The device will still immediately wake back up from sleep. The prescaler and watchdog timer will be cleared. The TO bit will be set, and the PD bit will be cleared. All right, so, um, so that's how sleep works. And finally, even if the flag bits were checked before executing a sleep instruction, it's possible for flag bits to become set before the sleep instruction completes. And then if you want to find out, that's when you have to test the PD and the, uh, the PD bit. If it's set, the sleep instruction was executed as a no-op. In other words, it was more or less skipped. Okay, so th those are some ways in which the, uh, the sleep instruction works. All right. For some reason, I'm not seeing myself down here. I'm going to sneak in just a little more. Okay. And then if we look at the uh, watchdog timer. Oh, here's... Yeah, wake up. Right. If we look at the watchdog timer, it's a very short chapter, too. It's also just two pa uh, three pages. Well, four. Okay. But they're mostly just blank. All right. So uh, let's just read about this. It's only one page to read. So I'm just going to do it. Uh, no. Uh, okay, there's two pages. The watchdog timer is a system timer that generates a reset if firmware does not issue a clear watchdog instruction within the timeout period. Okay, so the way this is supposed to work uh, is you're supposed to write the code in such a way that as the code runs, it will naturally, if it's running correctly, issue a clear watchdog timer instruction every so often. So you set the... the the interval in the watchdog in the watchdog uh, uh, register, you, you in the watchdog control register, to 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 not time out uh, until to, to before the next clear watchdog timer instruction is executed. So as long as you're you know about how often you're going to execute one of those instructions, then you you can definitely uh, keep that watchdog timer from ever timing out. But let's say uh, a lightning bolt hits nearby, or maybe a user input does something you never anticipated, and somehow it throws uh, your code into a into some kind of a into some kind of a blind loop, and you're just and you're basically just uh, just going in a tight circle, and you never execute the clear watchdog timer. Well, then what happens is, I made myself go away. Sorry, I'll fix it here. Then what happens is. The watchdog timer times out after it counts whatever interval you set. We'll look at that in a second. And when it and when it when it the watchdog timer times out, it resets your device. Now uh, there are several different ways it can operate. It can operate. Uh, it can be turned off. It can be turned always on. It can be turned always on except when it's in sleep mode and then it's off. And then it can be controlled by software. And so we're going to set it up to be controlled by software. So there's a bit in the register, and I'll show you the register coming up right here. Yeah, here. Here's the register. This is the watchdog watchdog timer control register, and it 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 only has uh, 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 six bits. Doesn't have eight because these upper two are not implemented. It has a five-bit register that allows you to pick uh, a bunch of these prescale values, and we'll look at those in just a second. And then it has the lower order bit is this software watchdog timer enable bit. Now, when you uh, the way you get this to work is you have to set the configuration word. So if we go to device configuration, uh, the configuration words. The one that we have to deal with here is, uh, this is configuration word one. It's this watchdog timer enable word right here. This one right here. And if you look at this, what it says is,
there's it's a two-bit field and you get four choices you can enable it you can disable it so if you enable it it's always on if you disable it it's always off you can enable it to run whenever the chip is running but to not run in sleep with this setting and finally you can put it in this SWDTEN st status where you can control it with that software bit in the watchdog control register and that's that's what we're going to select now I'll show you that in a little minute all right if we go back up here to uh, to the watchdog timer again so uh, there's kind of the block diagram and but we'll look at so the watchdog timer derives its time base from the 31 kilohertz low frequency internal oscillator and this this oscillator os, os, uh, operates in sleep or in, when you're woken up operates all the time the watchdog timing uh, the watchdog timer operating modes so here they are always on so when the WDTE bit of the config word one is set it's always on and it's also on during sleep the watchdog timer you can set it so it's off in sleep but otherwise on and you can set it so it's controlled by software and you can set it so it's off all the time and uh, here are the different operating modes here are the four different settings and the uh, software enable uh, the they're all don't cares except when you choose this setting which allows you to turn it on and off in software by changing this bit in the watchdog configuration register but in this case it is it's active all the time including in sleep if you enable it all right so that's probably all you really need to know about the watchdog timer except these bits so there's five bits here and look at the range you can set it from uh, a timeout interval of one millisecond all the way down to a timeout interval of 256 seconds which I think is a little less than four is just a little over four minutes 256 seconds so about four minutes so that's a, a little over four so that's a that's a really long time um, and then in this last bit is just that's your software enable bit so that's what your software can turn on and off to uh, be able to to control the watchdog timer and for this lab we want to do that so that's why we're going to use that configuration word setting and then in our software we're going to turn this bit on we're going to set this bit and clear this bit when it is set the uh, uh, well it when it's when you've chosen the right setting in the configuration word this bit is considered if it's one the watchdog timer is on and if it's zero the watchdog timer is off any of the other three settings in the configuration word this bits ignored and the these timings are they're a little bit arbitrary because uh, they're approximate because the watchdog timer is based on the 31 kilohertz low frequency internal oscillator which can be off a hair but since you're counting it many 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 times uh, you're 2 to the 23 prescaling uh, those slight uh, errors can can affect it by a few seconds potentially okay all right so that's all the data sheet I wanted to look at now uh, a couple of other things so we're going to use we're going to use the uh, we're going to use the the CR2102 UART to, to uh, USB dongle and we're going to create a uh, we're going to create a a window uh, right here and this one's already kind of set up but I'm, I'm gonna I think what I'll do is turn this off right now and I'll just restart it okay and then uh, to to set this up what you need to do is you right click on the start thing go up to device manager click on that it opens up this if if you don't see the ports then you pull down view and click on show hidden devices but here they were already shown for some reason it was good because I looked at it earlier notice that it's not grayed out it's uh, it shows up dark and it says Silicon Labs CP 210X USB to UART bridge so that's our little dongle and it's in my case it's set for com7 all right and usually even when you change uh, USB jacks it's still actually set for that same uh, setting so now you click on you bring up putty 
And you may have to download it because Blackboard's now not letting you download it at all from Blackboard. It won't let, won't let me host executables for some strange reason. All right, so there we go. And then it comes up, and I'm going to just put it, uh, put it over here somewhere. And then I have a little table. If we go into the, uh, if we go into Blackboard, here we are. You can see, you know, invalid file. Yeah, it's invalid because they don't want an executable. My file's fine. It's their problem, not mine. But anyway, it let us use it in Lab Six, and now they, now they put this thing up, which really is slightly irritating. And I think when you guys look at it, you won't even see it. It's just gone. Uh, so you you have to download it, and you can use any terminal terminal program you want. But Putty's super easy, and it's small, and it's it's a good choice. All right. So here we are with the sleep lab, and so the if you do the addendum, um, okay, I it timed out. So uh, let's redo this. Uh, so we just do this. We'll log in again. Crap. Clicked where I shouldn't have. And then we'll go. Oh, okay. We're back here. Good. All right. So here we are in Lab 8. And uh, so if you do the addendum right here, then you'll bring up uh, this file here. And I, I already have it partially brought up. And uh, I could make it big. And this just has uh, some useful information and some questions to answer. I haven't finished it. Uh, uh, I need to modify it a little bit. Anyway, so there it is. And we're going to, we're going to, we'll use this. To, we're going to look at this. And what this does, it kind of walks you through how the, how this program is supposed to run and tells you what's going on. Because it's, it's, it's a little bit complicated in that regard. All right. Now we're going to get rid of this. And then uh, we have our terminal window here. We have our um, guide over here. Uh, we have our code here. And we've got me. Perfect. OK, so let's just go through this program a little bit. So first off, uh, and I'm, I'll make this code as is available. OK, so the first thing is you have to add these include files uh, STDIO and STDLib, plus obviously XCH. When you set the configuration words, you set them up just like you always do. Remember low voltage programming on. Don't screw that up. And then watchdog timer, you want to set it equal to SWDTEN. And you can do that. Remember down here where we do our do our uh, config words. We do pull up uh, Windows memory target views. Configuration, crap. Configuration bits, there we are. And when you go down to Watchdog Timer, right here, you have these choices. On, not in sleep, software enabled, and off. We want the software, software Watchdog Timer enabled. And what that says, Watchdog Timer controlled by the so software so Watchdog Timer enable bit in the WDTCon register which we looked at just a second ago. All right. OK, and we will get rid of this. OK, and pull back our various things. All right, um, this fell down somehow. OK, so here, here is our, I'm going to shrink this a little bit. OK. Now, um, so that's our configuration stuff. The rest of it's the same. Now, now we have to add in the same stuff we've used for our UART, all this stuff, our crystal frequency, our baud rate, our divider, uh, the FOS 9 bits, speed, uh, the receive and transmit pins, all that stuff. Keep in mind that our receive pin is TRIS C5. We're going we're gonna to use that fact later on. We have some function prototypes, setup com. We have to have these three uh, these three routines so we can use the uh, printf command. Uh, I, we're not going to call them directly, but printf is going to call them directly. And then we have timer config, uart config, and then I made this little program here, uh, which is called long white. I don't know. I should. It's anyway. You got you got red, green, blue, and you can 
you can turn on all three of them or only one of them or whatever. But if you set zero, 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 you'll turn on all three and have white. So I just use it to, to blink the white light. I have it set up so you can look at the board and tell what, what it's doing. But it, we're also going to print out messages uh, to, the, uh, to the terminal window. Okay, so our terminal window is all set. So we'll pull, pull, pop all that stuff back up here, uh, here, and here, and here, and here. All right, and that's it. Okay, so we're going to keep going down. Now, uh, so first thing we're going to do is uh, we have, we're going to have an interrupt routine. And notice it's, we set this up void, interrupt, we give it a name. I, get, I think the name's maybe even almost optional, but anyway, probably a good idea to give it a name. No, it returns no parameters, it passes no parameters. But you have to have this interrupt keyword. If you're using, uh, if you're not using, if you're using uh, 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 XC8 uh, version 2.0 and greater instead of 1.45, then you're gonna, then I think you're gonna have to do underscore, underscore, interrupt, in, underscore, underscore. Uh, I forget, the syntax is a little different. Um, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna clear the, the, the RB7 interrupt on change flag. Now, remember, we have a number of different interrupts. We have, we have all the modules can generate interrupts. We have a single pin that's a legacy interrupt pin. I forget which pin that is. And then we have uh, two registers. I, I think it's A and uh, B that uh, can do interrupt on change. And you can read about that. We've, we've already gone over this in other lectures. Uh, we're going to use the interrupt on change features on these pins. And the nice thing is, uh, because of the sleep function, if you put the processor to sleep and you enable the interrupt for one of these interrupt on change pins and you enable all the bits except you don't turn on the global interrupt enable bit, then your interrupt will still wake you up from sleep, but it won't actually cause an interrupt. If, on the other hand, you uh, turn on the global interrupt enable bit, then your interrupt will actually it wake you up from sleep, execute one instruction after the next instruction in the program, and then it will jump to the interrupt service routine, ex execute that, and then go back into your main routine wherever you left off one instruction past your uh, one instruction past your sleep instruction. Okay, so uh, so here's our routine. Now this is a real straightforward routine. Now notice. When we, when we go in this routine, we're going to be in, uh, in sleep mode. Now, in, sleep, in every case in sleep mode, we turn on the blue LED and leave it on until sleep is over. And when sleep is over, we turn off the blue LED. But interestingly, uh, when I originally wrote this, I, I put in this instruction here, lat, lat 2 equals 1, which basically is one way to turn off the, uh, the blue LED. But I've commented it out because when we do this part, remember that it's going to execute one instruction in the main routine after the sleep instruction, only one. And then it's going to jump to the interrupt service routine and continue. And so just in order to make sure it's really doing that, I put this instruction uh, turning off the blue LED right after the sleep instruction in the code. In fact, I'll show you where it is. It's right down here on the on the third sleep when we wake up the one is the first instruction it it's going to execute is lata2 equals one that turns off the blue led and then it's going to jump to the interrupt routine up here and in the interrupt routine it's going to flash the red led which is lat6 i'm sorry uh yes yeah, c6 the red led it's going to turn it on wait a half a second turn it off wait a half a second, turn it on, wait a half a second, off half a second, on half a second, off half a second, on half a second, off for three quarters of a second, and then, uh, sorry, on for three quarters and off for three quarters, whatever. It's going to flash it four times. The last flash is going to be 50% uh, longer, and you should be able to notice that. It's going to flash it one, two, three, 
four, sorry, four, one, two, three, four times. And going to end with it's off. Now, if that if that latch to instruction after the sleep instruction doesn't execute, then you'll have the, the blue and the, the red on, and you'll see kind of a purplish, and you, and you won't see pure red. So if you see pure red, you know that that instruction immediately after the sleep instruction did get executed, and then it jumped into the interrupt service routine. And I, so I want you to watch for that. Okay, uh, and in fact, that is what happens, but you can watch and see. And then when it finishes the interrupt service routine, it's gonna print uh, in the ISR, and then it's gonna return. And the other thing it is going to do at the very beginning, it's going to clear the flag in the interrupt uh, on change register for the B port. And it's, going to, and it's going to clear the RB7 flag. There's a different flag for each pin. And it's going to clear the one for pin 7. Okay, so this, is, this will be kind of interesting. What I want you to look for is uh, if it doesn't behave like you'd expect it to. All right, so... Now here's our main routine. We're gonna set up uh, for four megahertz like we always do. We're gonna set up the APFCON register to re, 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 redirect RC4 and, R, and uh, RC5 uh, for the UART uh, because those are the pins that are actually connected on our Viva board. Uh, hard, hard wired to four and five to the, to the, uh, our, um, the uh, CP2102 dongle. And then we're going to clear the Ansel registers, and we're going to set the Tris register A and C for all outputs, but we're going to set up the B register. We're going to set up bit 7 as an input and bit 5 as an input. Now, bit 7 is our push button, but we're going to use RB5 in a special way I'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, okay, now we're going to go through four phases. And this is what it's going to look like. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger to start with. And maybe we'll blow it up here just a little bit more. Okay. Now, so what happens is we start and we're going to print a start message. And the blue light's going to go on for two seconds, the first time only. Uh, well, actually, first the green light's going to come on. I think I didn't. Uh, I should be. Maybe I even change that. I think it, yeah, I think it's green light. So, so sorry. Green light's going to come on, and then it's going to go off, uh, and then the, the blue light then. So it just goes off, and then the blue light's going to stay on until the chip wakes up. Every time the chip is asleep, the blue light's going to be on. Um, that's how we set it up. Uh, then, so the blue light will be on, and in the first sleep mode, we're gonna we're gonna have the watchdog timer turned on by setting the bit in the the watchdog timer control register that turns it on, which means it's gonna be on when the chip is running and it's gonna be on during sleep, and we're gonna configure the watchdog timer register for an eight second uh, prescale time. So that after eight seconds, about, it will wake up. Okay, so, so what happens is, if you, if you, uh, you can wake it up by two methods. By, by waiting eight seconds, and the watchdog timer will time out and wake it up automatically. Or you can push the button. Now, we could change that time from eight seconds to 256 seconds if we wanted to. Uh, or any value in between. That was one of the values in that register, which uh, you probably remember looks like this. Okay, so all the way from one millisecond to 256 seconds. All right. Now, the next thing that's going to happen uh, is that um, we're going to go into wake up, wake. We're going to go to sleep the second time, and the blue light will blink once, and then. Uh, We'll, we're going to turn off the watchdog timer, and then we're going to go to sleep the second time. The blue light will be on again, and uh, it'll stay on until we wake up. And the only way to wake it up this time is with an interrupt, 
and the only interrupt that's active is going to be the push button RB7 interrupt on change interrupt. So when you push RB7, it will interrupt it and wake it up. And then you're going to get a couple of white blinks uh, and uh, the white will flash two times and then you're going to go into sleep three. The blue light will blink a couple times and then uh, then the uh, now we're going to enable the global interrupt bit in, in when we go to sleep the third time. And we're going to set it up so that we'll have either the positive or negative edge. Both edges will be enabled for RB7 so that regardless of how what happens on the button, we should get an interrupt. The button will cause the processor to wake up from sleep, execute the one instruction after the sleep instruction, and then jump to the interrupt service routine, where it's going to clear the flag, and it's going to and it's going to blink red four times. Now I want you to watch carefully and tell me if you notice something weird happens here. And at the end, after it finishes blinking four times, it's going to print uh, in the interrupt routine. And then when it comes back, it's going to print uh, uh, interrupt routine completed. And then it's going to the white light's going to blink four times, and uh, and then we're going to go into mo the fourth the fourth part. The fourth part, sleep four, is a little different. What we're going to do in sleep four is we're going to put it to sleep, but we're not going to use RB7. We're going to turn it off. So you can punch RB7 all you want. It's not going to wake it up. But when you but but if you go into the to the uh, uh, to the window to the putty window here and you put your cursor in here and you type a character, you won't see the character displayed on the screen because uh, when it when it receives characters, it displays them. But when it transmits characters, it doesn't it doesn't automatically echo them on the screen. You don't see them, but it does send the character out. Only push the button one only push one button one time. And the way I've set the program up is, if you put in a capital P, my first initial, then then it'll recognize that and flash white four times and start the program over. But if you put in any other character, including a lowercase p, it won't recognize it, and it will uh, it'll put this it'll put the processor back to sleep. And then if you punch in another character, it'll check that to see if it's a capital P. If it's not, it goes back to sleep, and it'll stay basically just going right back into sleep mode until you press capital P. In which case, it'll wake up permanently and then start the program over. Okay, and that's all there is. Now your challenge. Uh, is to set it up so that uh, so that uh, so that it'll do that for your your middle name or your your initial, not your name, just your initial, one character. Now what's interesting is the uh, the UART can, if it's properly configured, the UART can generate an interrupt during sleep but only if you're in synchronous mode. And we, we don't use our UART in synchronous mode. We use it in asynchronous. And so because we use it in asynchronous mode, in asynchronous mode, it cannot, it cannot uh, receive a character, which is kind of sad. So I thought, well, darn, I really, wanted to use the, I really wanted to use the terminal window, your desktop or laptop. I want you to be able to type a character on that and wake your pick board up. And I scratched my head and you know, kind of thought about it. And I thought, oh, I know how I can do that. And here's what I did. I connect the wire from the pin where that receives the uh, the command from the from the USB dongle to the UART. And that happens to be our RC5. So I connect the wire from RC5 to uh, RB5. And I configured RB5 to be an interrupt on change pin. So instead of using RB7, I'm using RB5. And uh, and now when the character comes in, that causes a, a brief pulse. Uh, well, it, it starts with a start pulse on, uh, on R, RC5, which then by wire is connected to RB5, 
which then causes an interrupt on change. And uh, the processor wakes up fast enough that the UART module then comes to life and receives the character that you're sending because the, the, the leading, the start pulse is what triggered it. So now it wakes up and it actually receives the character, which is really cool. So, so you can actually, by just using another pin and a wire, you can connect it and, and get it to wake up uh, using the UART, even though, even though the UART is actually asleep and not running. Uh, but it wakes up fast enough to still get the character. All right, so let's watch this happen. So I'm going to shrink this back down and see if this will do it. It's not too bad. Yeah, maybe we make this just a smidgen bigger. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. Okay. And let's bring me in here too. Okay, so let me just go through the program one time so you can see. So, so the interrupt on change, uh, so this just sets up the UART and the comms. So that gets us so that we can use this uh, UART. And then we, uh, and, and, uh, and we have our set our TRIS B, our TRIS C, we do need two inputs for RC5 and RC4, but we do that in the UART config and setup com stuff. And the setup com sets the baud rate and the, the clocks and stuff for the UART. Okay, so now, um, so here we have our interrupt on change uh, port B uh, uh, flag, and this is the flag that's going to get set that's going to that's going to cause an interrupt. In this case, we're we're clearing flag seven. Although we really could clear all the flags, I don't know. Uh, we just set it up that way. Maybe what I should do. Well, it doesn't matter. And then we 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 set interrupt on change uh, for port B, the negative edge uh, for pin seven, and that's what zero x eighty is. That that enables pin seven. We set the bit for the the, for the negative. There's a there's a negative edge register for port B and a positive edge register for port B. And we could set the positive edge, edge register too. And then we, uh, and then we uh, set the interrupt control. We enable interrupt on change interrupts. But we don't enable the global interrupts, so there won't be an interrupt yet. But we'll do that in, in step three, in part three. Okay, now here's our infinite while loop. And then we go ahead and we, we put 1B into the watchdog timer control register, which starts the watchdog timer. It sets the, it sets the low order bit, which is that software control bit to turn it on and off. And it puts, a, uh, it puts the uh, count of, uh, it puts 01101 in, which gives us an interval of about eight seconds. Okay, so we could have picked 16 seconds or four seconds or whatever. All right, now we uh, we go ahead and uh, we these are our LEDs LATA5, LATA2, and LATC6. So A5, A2, and C6. Green, blue, red. So we turn on the green for two seconds, and that indicates go. And then we do a two second delay here. We use the delay function, underscore, underscore, delay, underscore, millisecond, 2000. So that's two seconds. Then we turn the green off and then we print this message, a uh, couple of carriage returns and line feeds, top of, loop, top of while loop, part one. Okay, so that gets printed. And then we, uh, then we enable the interrupt on change on the push button neg edge and we clear the flag again. And then uh, we blink the blue LED once. And then we print first sleep, wake with push button, or watchdog timer timeout. And then we turn on the blue LED and we issue the sleep command right here. We go to sleep. And if eight seconds expires, then the, uh, then the watchdog timer will wake us up. And if we push the push button, the push button will wake us up. 
So here we go ahead and we just wait eight seconds and let that wake us up. But either way, we can tell which one did it. As soon as we wake up, we turn off the blue LED and then we check the interrupt on change uh, port B flag for bit seven. And if it's and if it's uh, and if it's zero, then then we know the push button woke us up. Well, we we end it with one. Sorry, if it's one, if it's one, this will be true. So we know the push button woke us up, and and we also clear it in, by this, and then we we display a. Uh, blue and green simultaneously for sort of a little purple, okay? And that means that it was the push button, and we, we flash that for uh, on for half a second, off for a second. If, on the other hand, that is negative, uh, if, that, if there's not a 1 in the 7 position, then we print wake up by watchdog timer timeout, and we blink blue and red. So blue and green, Push button, blue and red, timeout, watchdog timer. Okay, and now we clear all of the port B, interrupt on change flags. We really only should have to clear uh, bit 7. But we clear them all anyway. And, uh, and then, let's see, I'll bring, well... And then we, uh, I think I can probably go up here. Okay. And then we, uh, we blink the, the blue LED twice. We print ready for part two, blink the blue LED twice. And we uh, turn off the watchdog timer so it's not going to time out. And then we, then we print second sleep, only push button wakes up. Turn on the blue LED, we leave it on, go to sleep. Now we stay asleep, as long as we stay asleep, basically the only way we've set up to, work it, to wake it up is to, uh, is, is to push the push button, RB7. We could, in theory, uh, just do a reset, that would wake it up, but it, but it would reset the whole program we'd be starting over. So if you want to continue, then we actually have to wake it up with uh, the interrupt. Uh, but in this case, just like in the first, first part, we're not really doing an interrupt because our global interrupt enable bit is still off. So we're only, we're only using the interrupt flag for the uh, interrupt on change for port B, pin 7. We're only using that to, do, to wake us up from sleep, but to not actually cause a real interrupt. Okay, so we push the push button, and we wake up, we turn off the blue LED, we print second wake up, and then we uh, flash the, the white LED t two times. Okay? Now, um, now, uh, now what we do is we uh, clear the, the interrupt flag, because if we went to sleep again, we wouldn't even go to sleep. We would, do, we would, we would actually skip the sleep instruction. It would be treated as a no-op, because the flag's still set. So you have to clear the flag, otherwise you'll just skip it. And then we go ahead and enable interrupt on change push button, negative edge and positive edge for pin 7 and port B. And then we blink the blue LED three times, and then we turn on the blue LED. Or, well, we, uh, we actually leave it on. And then we set the global interrupt bit. So now we're really going to do an interrupt. We're not just going to set the flag and wake up from sleep, but we're actually going to create an interrupt, which is also going to wake us up from sleep. But uh, when it wakes up this time, instead of just continuing with the mainline routine right after the sleep instruction, it's going to execute one instruction after the sleep instruction, and then it's going to go to the interrupt service routine. So we turn on the blue LED, issue the sleep command. When we push the push button, it generates the interrupt, it executes one instruction after the sleep command, which is turn off the blue LED. Now, if this instruction doesn't work, 
then when we flash the red LED in our interrupt service routine, we're going to have the blue and the red on at the same time. It's going to look purplish. So we can tell if this executes correctly. And, uh, and then, but theoretically, it should do this. Jump to the interrupt service routine, execute that, and then come back and print third wake up interrupt service routine or interrupt routine finished. And then it'll print flash the white light three times. And now we're going to go into part four. And part four, we're first going to turn off global interrupt. So now we're not going to do a real interrupt, but we're still going to use the interrupt flag for port B. Only now we're not going to use port B pin seven. We're going to use port B pin five. And so here we're going to do, we're going to clear the flag. We're going to disable the positive edge on RB7. And we should actually disable the negative edge too. Uh, oh, well, we do it down here. We do it anyway. Here we write the positive edge and the negative edge. So actually, we don't even need this. So I'm going to get rid of this. Don't need this. Uh, so we... We clear all the flags, and then we, uh, and they have to be cleared anyway, or we, we would have gotten another interrupt anyhow. And so then we do an interrupt on change for the positive edge and the negative edge for pin 5. So we, we, we write 20, hex 20 to the port, hex 20 to the port for the, the positive edge port and the negative edge port, and then... For this is this is RB5, not RB7. For RB7, we have to write 80, right? But we write 20 here, so that only that only turns on the interrupt on change on RB5. So now you can push the push button to your blue in the face, it won't do anything. And then we uh, enable the interrupt on change interrupts, but we leave the GIO, the GIE bit off, so we're not actually going to get an interrupt. And then we create this little loop, which is really the code I kind of wanted you to write, but uh, but I'm just going to throw it in here anyway. Uh, so it's a do while loop, okay? It's a do while loop right here. The while is controlled by letter not equal to, in my case, capital P. So if, as long as the letter is not equal to capital P, it's continuing to do this do while loop. Remember, a do while loop always executes one time at a minimum. And if it if it turns out that the letter is equal to P, then it will not execute again because this is a not equal. So, so as long as the letter is not equal to P, it's going to keep executing. But if it is equal to P, it'll stop. Okay? And what it does, it prints fourth sleep uh, type character only. Put the cursor in the putty window. Now notice, if you want to type a character in putty, uh, which is here, you have, you have to have the cursor in there. If you put the cursor someplace else, uh, that's a bad place to put it. Let me, uh, I'll put it someplace else, actually. Here, hang on. I'm going to click over off the field. Well, I'll, I'll, here, I'll turn me on there. Notice the cursor went hollow in putty here. If I click then over here in putty, it goes solid. When the cursor is solid, anything you type on the keyboard is sent from the terminal window down the USB cable to the CR2102 dongle, converted to U, to TTL level UART, and it's sent into the PIC on the receive channel, which happens to be RA5. I'm sorry, happens to be RC5. And so I have a one, but my UART's turned off because I'm in sleep. So what I had to do is I had to put a, a wire I had to put a wire from the from the UART pin here to RB5 over here. So that's all I did. We don't need this one. I just have that one wire connecting RC5 to RB5. And that's because although there'll be a signal coming in from my CR2102 dongle, and here I'll I'll I'll, I'll make this a little brighter so you can see it. Maybe. Yeah. But, but, uh, so my dongle here uh, will send the information into the pick, 
But because the mo because it's in sleep, the module's not working. There's no clock and the module's not functioning. But this wire picks up the signal and sends it to our B5, which shows a rising or a falling edge, whichever it is, and triggers an interrupt, which wakes the device up from sleep. And then it checks to see the character. Now here's the really cool thing. It wakes it up fast enough to receive the rest of the, the pulses that come in, and it actually decodes the character correctly. Really amazing. So, um, so that's how it works. All right, so now, uh, and then if it matches, then it's going to drop through and not execute this again. But as long as it doesn't match, it'll keep doing this until it finally matches. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate it. I think I'm going to maybe blow these things up a little bit bigger. Uh, I don't really need, oops. Yeah, here we go. There's putty. And then here's this. I'll make this a little bigger. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. We'll do something like this. All right. So now I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to start the program. Actually, it's already started. But I, I think I'm going to try and restart it. And to do that, I'm just going to, I don't want to change the RB7, but I'm going to, I'm going to plug this in and I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to use it to, uh, to simulate. Okay, it's, it's in reset now. I'm doing a manual reset, basically. And now it prints out top of the while loop, part one, first sleep, wake with push button or watchdog timer timeout. So I'm not going to do anything. And we'll, after eight seconds, it should time out. There it was. Wake up by watchdog timer, time out. Now we're ready for part two. Second sleep. Now it's sleep again because it's in blue. Only the push button wakes it up. So now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to push the push button. You can see my little finger there. And then it's going to flash white twice. And then it's going to uh, it print second wake up. And then it's going to blink the blue two times and then it's going to go to sleep again. Push the button again to ISR after uh, and then it's going to execute that one instruction and then it's going to jump to the ISR. Okay, so so I have to push the push button again. It's going to blink red th four times. One, two, three, four. It did it again. Why did it do it twice? Notice it actually printed in the ISR two times, so it executed the interrupt service routine twice. Why did it do that? And then it printed third week up, wake up, interrupt service routine finished, fourth sleep, type a character only, put the cursor in the putty window. Okay, I'm going to click in here, and then I'm going to put in an X. Okay, it read the X, woke it up, but because the X was not the right character, it went back to sleep. For sleep, type character only. So now let me put in an A. I'll put in a capital A. Okay, great. Uh, type character only, uh, capital A again. We'll do another one. There's another one. For some reason, I'm getting an extra thing in here. I don't know what's up with that. I guess it, I think it wakes up so fast it does it twice. Let me see if I can. No, I don't know. Anyway, I, I guess it reads it. I guess it. I'm not sure why it does that. I'll plead ignorance. All right, now I'm going to put in a lowercase p. Didn't like that. It only printed out one of those, so don't ask me. And now I'm going to put in. Now I'm going to put in a capital P. And can't tell it from the lowercase p really, but you can see it's flashing white four times, and it's going to start over. Top of loop. First sleep, and it's ready to do it all over again. All right, so that's pretty much the entire demonstration. So, uh, and it already timed out. It's ready for the second sleep. So hopefully, hopefully you can see uh, that the that the watchdog timer and sleep functions are 
pretty powerful. They, there's all sorts of really interesting things you can do. You're totally welcome to use the watchdog timer in your project. You're totally welcome to use sleep in your project. That would also be cool. So do whatever you want. And you can use your uh, desktop to wake it up. So you can actually put your, your pick to sleep. And the power that it's drawing will go down to a fairly low level. Now I actually measured the power. Uh, I won't do it tonight because I'm already, it's getting late. But but the the actual power savings is, the way it's configured here is pretty minimal because we're sucking so much power uh, already uh, through the stupid thing. Maybe I will do it. It would just take a second to do it. It's not a big deal. Uh, let's see. I think I have... Um, let me pause this a second. Should be able to do it real easily. Okay, so what you can see now is I, I've got my meter here and it's it's actually in sleep, but the LED is drawing a lot of power. Uh, so I could change the code and cut, cut that off, but I'm, I think what I'll do is just leave it alone. But, but, but when it goes off, you'll see this. So when it comes out of sleep, you'll see that it, it spikes up a little bit. Uh, so let's so let's punch the push button here, and you'll see it goes up 70, and then when it goes back to sleep, you'll see it drops down. You see it goes to about 43 when the LED's off, and then uh, 53 with it on. Uh, so so it would be anyway. It, 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 what it doesn't really show you is a big savings. Now, why is that? Well, this, this setup is far from ideal for, for our purposes. One of the problems here is that, uh, that we, have, uh, we have two linear regulators that are being controlled by the battery. Now, if I take the battery out of the circuit, then you're going to see no power at all because, because I, I'm, I'm measuring, the, uh, I'm measuring the, the, the power going going through this input. So if I take this out, it should go practically to zero. Yeah. So there's really no power going through there now. Uh, just, well, there's still a little bit. There's five, there's five milliamps um, going through because, uh, again, the only way to cut that off is to unplug the battery completely, which if I do that, it should go down to zero. Yeah, which it does. So now you can see I've unplugged it. But if I plug it back in, even even without it doing anything at all, I, I'm losing I'm losing six milliamps in the two regulators without drawing any current whatsoever. Uh, now, if I put it in, if I put it on uh, 3.3 volts, and let's do the same thing over. Yeah, you can see it's it is a little lower now. Now it's showing 33, and then we'll see when it uh, when it comes out of this that. Uh, It goes on to like 31, so it's it's definitely a little lower power there. So you can so certainly the voltage you run this at definitely changes how much power it uses. That's pretty obvious. Um, and oh, yeah, you probably can't couldn't see, but so this is only 33 milliamps now running at 3.3 volts. So so that's uh, that's definitely something you know that's. So there are a lot of things you can do to decrease the the power consumption in sleep, but but. A couple of big mistakes you wouldn't want to make. You wouldn't want to use linear regulators because they suck up, well, in this case, drawing no power, they suck up six milliamps. And then when they draw power, the, those regulators actually uh, kill a lot of the power. Now, we could measure it, at, we could measure it after the regulators. That actually would be a, not a bad thing to do. Uh, let's see if we can, I don't know if we can do that or not. That's going to be a little trickier, but not impossible. So let me pause it one more time, and we'll do that. Okay, now you can see what I've done. I've uh, I'm using I've just I went to banana clips here, changed them out to uh, little alligator clips or little clips, and I'm just clip I instead of using the the shorting block across the uh, across the regulator, I'm just using the uh, I'm putting the meter to connect the power. So it's currently drawing five, uh, five milliamps. Now that's in sleep. 
So it's actually, that's pretty good actually. Now, now when it comes out of sleep, you'll see no, with, the LED takes about three milliamps. So, so if you figure, if you subtract the three milliamps, it's drawing about two milliamps in sleep. Uh, and uh, yeah, and yeah, two milliamps in sleep. And, and, and uh, yeah, that looks like about what it's drawing. And then when it comes out, you'll see the power definitely picks up. It's about 11, 12, 9, 13, somewhere in there, 13 milliamps. And of course, a lot of that's got to do with the LEDs. The LEDs are, uh, are power hungry compared to the, the micro. The micro, micro is only drawn, um, you know, here in sleep, it's drawn about 2 milliamps. That's really what it looks like. So that's pr pretty cool. So you can see it does really cut the, does really cut the, uh, the power down quite a bit. Okay, I think we'll quit with that, and uh, and uh, we will see you then. Uh, let's see. Um, on uh, so on Tuesday, hopefully everybody submitted their uh, their proposal, and I'm going to be reviewing those. I will do a little quiz uh, for this video as well, and then we'll do this sleep lab on Friday. And I'll, I I will post a brand new. Uh, I'll, I'll clean up the documents. So if you download them before Friday morning, they could be, they may not be, uh, I may not have uploaded the new ones yet. I'll hopefully get it done by late tomorrow night. All right. Talk to you later.